So this is the question, does adding a lubricant to a fishing knot improve or hinder its performance? The results from the World's Strongest Knot series so far shows that each knot moves internally very different. And depending on how it moves, the standing end is either protected or destroyed as it pulls out the top of the knot. I've been itching to do this series for ages now. Not only was it a lot of fun, but it's also really, really interesting. episode one of a three-part series looking at knot lubrication. Episode one, monofilament. Do we need to be using lubrication on our mono fishing knots or is this just a comedy series I've planned? <laughs> so my idea started off asking myself, do these old wives tales I've heard about over the past 30 years about adding bizarre products to your fishing knots stand true? We're gonna find out today I've put the Palama knot and the Toit knot head to head in this competition using seven different lubricators. Let's take a look at the lubricant ideas that are commonly found in the vicinity of a fisherman. Right, number one, nothing, nada. That's right, just tie the knot and stick it straight on the machine for testing. Nothing. Number two, fresh water. I use tap water for this one. Fresh water. Number three, salt water. Yep, that's straight out of the North Sea, so apologies for the color. Salt water. Number four, saliva. Every fisherman's go-to knot lubricant. Don't worry, no close-ups on this one. Saliva. Number five, Lipsil. Now I've seen various people using this, so I guess it's worth a punt. Lipsil. Number six, sun lotion. Now, if I'm honest, this one was a little bit of a laugh, to be honest, as I actually do worry about touching bait if I've recently put on some sun lotion. Number seven, WD-40, can a proper lubricant actually help the knot? I've genuinely heard of people spraying the stuff on their carp bait, although I must admit I've not done this yet. Also, I'd also be worried about over longer periods, does the oil affect the structural integrity of the monofilament? WD-40. Just a few broad parameters. We had a new batch of lines in, so we had to recheck the actual 100% line strength. For those of you that follow our World's Strongest Knot series closely, you will have noticed roughly a two pound increase when you see the results later in line strength on the same make of lines. 80 pound line class was chosen as this is a good average line strength that actually tests knots really well due to the forces involved. The Palama knot was chosen as this is a fixed knot type that struggles with heavier lines as the front end is very abrasive on the thicker lines. If you've not seen our Palama knot, World's Strongest Knot, episode 4, click up here where we talk about this abrasion in a little more detail. Also, the Toit knot was chosen as this is fixed both at the front end and the back end of the knot and it really secures the tag through the full length of the knot. If you want to know why the toy knot does so well, take a look at episode six of our World's Strongest Knot. Just click up here for that. All right, let's take a look at the results, starting with the Palama Knot. Palama Knot, fresh water, 70.18%. Palama Knot, Lipsil, 89.64%. Palama Knot, nothing. 76.09%. Palama knot with saliva, 78.32%. Palama knot with salt water, 
74.6%. Palomonot with sun lotion, 83.85%. Palomonot with WD-40, 78.51%. Alright, let's see what effect the lubricants had on the toit knot. Toit knot in fresh water, 95.27%. The toit knot with Lipsil, 91.7%. The toit knot with no lubrication, 83.44%. The toit knot with saliva, 96.23%. The toit knot in seawater, 94.33%. The toit knot with sun lotion, 92.68%. And the toit knot in WD-40, 91.19%. Alright, let's take a look at the overall results on the leaderboard table for both knots. Right, the Paloma knot. Incredible. Lips are at the top, then sun lotion, then WD-40. Now the percentages are really important here. Just to clarify, on our World's Strongest Knot competition, saliva is used as a lubricant for all the results. And if you look back at the 80 pound line class on the old batch of lines, you will notice there's a marginal difference, 2.2% increase in strength on the new batch of line. Now, that is really consistent. I'm really happy with that and I bet the manufacturer would be happy with that result also. Also, both in the overview video and the World's Strongest Knot video of the Palomar, I discuss both the final loop position and the amount of movement you get in this knot and how abrasive the front end of the knot is as the standing end pulls out and rubs against the shoulder of the knot as it exits. All these oil-based type lubricants are tested. WD-40 Sun Lotion Lipsol actually protect the standing end as it draws out the knot and increases the strength significantly. That is just so interesting that if you have either no lubricant or use fresh water, the knot does deteriorate significantly. Right, let's take a look at the toit knot. Oh my gosh, completely the opposite. Saliva on top, then fresh water, then sea water. Incredible. If I'm honest, I'm chuffed to bits. Glad it performs best with a simple and freely available lubricant. I'll be selling bottles of my saliva if you're interested. <laughs> It also achieved a marginal 2% increase in the saliva result on the next batch of lines, which is really consistent. And in fact, not only that, but it ended up being the top lubricant. In the Pizza Knot and the Toit Knot episodes of World's Strongest Knot, I went over the most important reasons why a knot fails. Click up here if you've not seen either of those videos. After extensive testing, I would predict that the strongest knot in the world is the knot that does not allow any internal movement during use. However, there is always movement. As a fishing knot moves, and depending on how the line moves through the knot, and how badly the standing end gets damaged as it pulls through, results in its final downfall. The reason it fails is the abrasion, the rubbing of line against line and line against hook. Or swivel. Let me show you here in this little screenshot. You can see the Palama knot contrasted with the toit knot. Notice that the toit knot actually does move a bit more but the line exiting the knot is not damaged whereas the Palama knot, the standing in, really does get damaged a lot quicker. You can actually see the little um, monofilament curl up as it's exiting out and that's the standing and getting destroyed. Let me attempt to try and summarize what a great episode. I love that. For me personally I'll probably never use sun lotion, WD-40 or Lipsol for a lubricant only because it's a faff and I'm unsure of the impact of the fish smelling any of these items but I'd certainly use water-based types saliva fresh water salt water depending on where I was fishing but my go-to is always going to be saliva only out of habit I must say that was really cool to film and test those lubricants I'll be looking at braid next 
and then fluorocarbon to sum up the lube videos. Let me know if you enjoyed this video with a like. Until next time, I'm Warren. Thanks for watching this episode on mono lubrication. Oh, I'd love to hear in the comments below if you use any of these more funky type lubricants I tested or maybe something else. Tight lines until next time. Oh, and just one more thing. I did also think about adding we not dip category, but my wife objected. She said that would be absolutely gross. I also thought about some other type of lube some older couples may carry on their boat. But again, I got an absolute roasting for that as well, for even thinking of the idea. Oh, and don't forget, check out my Amazon store, $25.99 for 30 cc's of my saliva. You saw the results, it's really good. <laughs> Take care guys, cheers man.